Well, as I was thinking about uh, the passages I'm going to speak on today and about this message, I, I began to think about my son, and we're going to look at some different pictures as we scroll through here. And I began to think back. My, my son went downstairs. He's, he's eight, almost nine. And I, I began to think back when he was, when he was this little guy, right? And I praise Jesus too. I just can't talk yet, his shirt says, right? And, and he was a cute kid. He really was. And you'll see more evidence in a minute. We're going to show some pictures here. That, that was his first birthday as he destroyed the cake. He, he had a good time with it. And, and, and when, we were, when we were young with, you know, this little guy here, people would tell us, be careful. The time, time goes so fast. Savor, savor the moment. He's giggling at these raindrops dripping off of the roof of the house there. He's just laughing insidiously, just like crazy losing his mind laughter. And, and they would say, you know, cherish it, right? Because it's going to go so quickly. And so we took lots of pictures. We took lots of videos. And, and when people would tell us this, you know, the time is going to go fast. That's him in a kilt. Um, uh, we would nod our heads, of course, when people say this time goes so quickly. Uh, but they do. They grow up so fast, right? Um, in, in retrospect, I, as I was thinking about our, our sermon today, and our sermon is going to be talking about time and and how we manage our time and use our time and what time means to us as Christians and, and can God redeem our time. And as I was thinking about this throughout the week, uh, I really had to say to myself, did I really need to go to all those meetings? Did I, did I really need to be busy all of those times? Did, when, when he would come up to me and he would, he would carry up a stack of books because he would want to read through all of them with me and he'd pile them on my lap and I might be busy with something. Would... What would I give to have some of those moments back to maybe do it again and do it a little bit better with the little guy, right? Whatever it was that took me away from that little guy, right? Uh, or those times where maybe I just didn't feel like I had the time or the energy. And, and he would look at me and, Daddy, 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 Daddy. You know, uh, it's like a machine gun when you have a young child. It's, Daddy, Daddy, Mommy, Mommy. They just kind of almost wear you out, but lovingly so, because they want your attention 24-7. And, 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 and they, they're consumed by making a show for you and showing off for you. And, and, and what would I do to be able to do some of that again? Did I miss out, right? And when we're thinking about this, uh, we don't just do this with our kids, of course, right? Uh, we think about those times where, yeah, I, I, I probably should have been a, more loving to that person. Uh, we should have shared Christ when God gave us that opportunity. We should have visited with them. We should have spent more time with them. And then, of course, conversely, there is the opposite to this effect. There are some people, as we look back on how we've used our time, when we look at those relationships, and we go, what was I thinking, right? Why, why did I hire him? Why did I date her? What was I thinking about being friends and hanging out with those folks? Sometimes, as we reflect on our time, we should have avoided rather than multiplied. And so oftentimes, because of this, our thoughts can be filled with, with, with shame and guilt, frankly, and sometimes remorse. The old would've, should've, could've, right? We all, frankly, have them. So we, we ask ourselves, can I redeem those moments? Can God redeem that time in my life? Well, we're continuing in a series, and that's why we kind of have a, a living room set up here, a series called Modern Family and Vintage Values. So welcome to my living room. And as we talk about this and we think about this, the modern family, it, it's complex. There's a, a lot of stuff going on, and there's a lot of stuff that attacks the modern family. Now, I am tremendously thankful that God's Word still holds true, and that it it is something that we can hold on, that God's Word is something that can ground ourselves so that we can learn from it and learn how we should move forward in this sinful and broken world that we live in. God's Word still gives wisdom to His people. So can we look at our time? Can we contemplate our time here on earth, the time that we have now, can God redeem it? Our mistakes, our failures, our relationships, all of it. 
As I, as I begin to dig in on this subject, I read a survey this week. It was a national survey that was talking about when it comes to life, what is it that you have to live for? And 94% of the respondents to this survey basically answered in a category that said, I'm just trying to endure today to live for tomorrow. Just simply endure. That's a pretty low bar, folks. 94% of the people, that's most of us, are just trying to grind it through today, hoping we get to see tomorrow. Uh, I think most of us would say that's true though, right? We oftentimes in the, the mundane of our day-to-day -day lives, we're, we often find ourselves going through the motions. We're just trying to get enough done to make it till tomorrow. We're trying to get through today with the hope, with the hope that something better might come tomorrow or in the future. And when we think about that, are we discounting the gift that today is? Are we discounting the gift that each and every day that God gives us is? Do we live with a mindset that sees today as a gift? Because folks, every single day that we are given, every single day that our eyelids open and we draw breath, is a gift. I love what Larry Nutting says. I always ask him, how are you doing, Larry? And he says, well, I, I'm going to summarize it a little differently than he does, but he basically says, I'm taking nourishment rather than making nourishment. <laughs> right? He's above the ground. Praise the Lord. I think you should switch it to saying it that way, Larry. But yes, every day is a gift. And so frequently, we take that for granted. Now, I did some calculations. Each and every one of us, we all have 24 hours in a day. We have 1,440 minutes every single day. 86,400 seconds every single day. Yet some people use that resource more wisely than others. And when it comes to family time, and when it comes to our time with God, are we seeing it as a gift? Every hour, every minute, every second. Do we see them as a gift from God, and are we using them wisely? Because I believe God does want to redeem our time here on earth. Now, that doesn't mean we try to be more productive by just cramming more stuff into less space, right? A sausage case can only hold so much, and you try to stick too much in it, and something's got to give, right? We can't try to cram more in. We do still need to have downtime. We do still need to have Sabbath. God created, and then even God took a day of rest. And so we should too. Yet, one way that we can redeem the time is that we can be the kind of people who learn to number our days. In Psalm 90.12, it says, So teach us to number our days that we might get a heart of wisdom. Honestly, I want to say that it is likely none of us are particularly good at this, right? It, it's, it's hard to number our days. It's not normal for most of us to wake up and to think, this might be my last day. Maybe I should do something that makes it rememberable, right? Now, we wake up and go, oh, my back still hurts. <sighs> I've got so much to do today. I should have woken up four hours ago. <sighs> but this bed is still kind of comfortable. Right? How many of us do that? We all do. Most all of us, anyhow. <coughs> it's tempting, anyhow, if we don't. Naturally, we don't wake up and go, this might be my last one, better make it a good one. We're thinking we got 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years to go. I don't know. We don't know. But few of us wake up thinking, let me start today numbering my days. We're generally not good at being proactive in this area of life. You see, life, life is like a car in a lot of respects. We're really good looking through that rearview mirror and seeing what came behind us, right? We're already gone past. We can look in that mirror, side view, side view, 
It's all behind us. We can see it pretty well. We can look through the windshield. We can see what's up ahead. We can see stuff off in the distance. We can see that quite well. The problem is, and police officers would tell you this, the dangerous stuff is the stuff that's in the car. That's the stuff that distracts you. That's the stuff that it's hard to focus on. If you, if you quit looking at the future and you're not looking behind you, you start paying attention to the stuff inside of the car, what happens? You drive off a cliff, you run into a tree, right? You, you do something you shouldn't with your vehicle. Many of us are bad about those things that are right here in the present. We don't make the most of today because we're still so worried about something in the rearview mirror or we're so focused on something that's out ahead that we completely disregard the here and now and the present. So the psalmist says, teach us, O God, teach us to number our days. We need the, the, the wisdom that the Lord gives in that. Teach us. Because time is valuable and finite. Of all the resources that we have in all of our life, the one and only one we can't get any more of, time. You can't earn more. You can't buy more. You can't go through the drive through and say, I'd like an extra 60 minutes for today. And you don't even know how much you have in the tank that's left, right? There's no like your gas gauge indicator to tell you how much time you have to go. So teach us to number our days, Lord, that we might use them wisely. God, show us how to be intentional and disciplined in this. Lord, we need that. We need to learn how to be intentional and disciplined with each and every day, each and every gift that we are given that is a day. And we do this so that as we do this, we become more and fully present in the here and now. And what that does is it allows us to be fully, truly present with God and with those close to us. We pray, God, redeem our time. Many of us get an extra day this week, right? So to speak. A day off tomorrow from work. It's Memorial Day weekend. Maybe this is the, the perfect opportunity to spend those hours that you got that would otherwise probably be at work or somewhere else, to use those to begin to capture this idea. It's a perfect opportunity to put this into practice. Sit on the boat with a couple of lines in the water and be present in the moment. Don't worry about what tomorrow has to bring. Give up your worries of what happened yesterday. And be there in the moment with those who are with you. Maybe sit around a campfire tonight, tomorrow night. Just tell some stories. Maybe it's just pulling out a board game or a pack of cards. And just being there, laughing, sharing, being present in meaningful ways. And even if you're an introvert like me, you still have to do this from time to time. You might need to be a little more selective about it. But we need to learn to engage and be present and make connections. Because it matters for how and when and where we will get to share Jesus with those around us. How we manage our time, how we use our time. Lord, teach us to number our days that we might use them wisely. Now before you think you've maybe got that part all down and you got it all wrapped up and your commitment's been met and all of that, let me remind you that there is a second side to this. And that second side is being present with the Lord. Paul talks about this in 1 Corinthians seven twenty nine through 31. It's a very interesting passage. And he says, Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek to be free. Are you free from a wife? Do not seek a wife. But if you do marry, you have not sinned. And if, you have a betrothed, if a betrothed woman marries, she has not sinned. Yet those who marry will have worldly troubles. And I would spare you that. This is what I mean, brothers. The appointed time has grown very short. From now on, Paul says, let those who have wives live as if they had none. And let those who mourn as if they were not mourning. And those who rejoice as if they were not rejoicing. And those who buy as if they had no goods. And those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present forms of this world are passing away. 
This is an interesting passage where Paul's talking to the church in Corinth about having a sense of urgency. Paul's reminding them that Christ is coming back and His return is soon. So how are we looking at our life now in light of the fact that Christ will be returning? How do we look at the things that we have? How do we look at our occupation, our homes, our families, our relationships? How do we look at all of these things in light of eternity? Redeeming our time means that we are focused on God in the here and now as well as for eternity. I don't know about you, but for me at least, I know this is how it happens. I, I get busy, right? I got so much going on. I have a mower to fix. I got a funeral to plan. I got a sermon to write. I got people to visit. I, I, I got people who want my counseling. I got my son needs to go to swimming lessons. I got Bible study to get ready for. I got meetings at the school. I got vacation to pack for. I got company coming over to the house pretty soon. So we got to get that ready. And I got all this other stuff and on and on and on. It piles on and on and on. And, and I got supper to cook and I got clothes to wash. And it begins to, to mount and build up and it begins to crowd everything out of my life. And, 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 I, and I don't have room and I don't have margin and it feels like I, I, I can't even breathe. I, I got so much. Anybody ever feel that way? Just me? And then what happens, right? One morning I, I miss reading my Bible, and then it's three days, and then it's five days. And pretty soon it's two weeks out, and I haven't read my Bible, I haven't prayed. And all of a sudden, I'm in a spiritual desert. God, you feel so distant from me. Where'd you move to? Oh, it wasn't you. We haven't spent time in the Word. Or maybe you used to be a, a prayer warrior. And all these things started happening in life. Somebody got sick, or you changed jobs, or something happened. And you've gone from praying an hour a day to your prayer being, just help me, God, as your only prayer of the day. And when our, our personal spiritual walk begins to be more of a stumble, when we begin to regularly miss opportunities for spiritual growth and, and miss and don't even notice chances to share our faith with others, what happens is the immediate, the imminent, the urgent, they begin to squeeze us. And all of a sudden, we're spiritually dry. When we learn to redeem our time, to keep our focus on Jesus, we begin to counter these life distractions. We know as Christ followers inherently that greater things are yet to come, right? Yet, we let the world distract us. We let the world dictate how we are going to spend our time. Folks, we need to change that even if it's only for five minutes a day to start, if you find that you haven't been in the Word of God for five minutes, today even, read the Word of God. If you don't like to read, there's lots of really good audio Bibles in this world. A tool I recommend a lot. It's called Version. If you've got a smartphone, an iPad, or a computer, you can access the Bible online. And they have versions of the Bible they will read it to you. You don't even have to read. You're driving down the road, you can listen to it. Maybe you're out fishing by yourself some afternoon. Put on the Word of God. It won't scare the fish away. He is the fisherman. He's the great fisherman. Don't put it on really loud. You know, if you've got the subwoofer in your boat, you may not want to crank it. But find a chance. Find a way. Make room. Redeem those Minutes, Lord, teach us the number of our day. God, show us how to redeem our time that we might use it for hearing from you in your word, spending time in prayer, sharing our faith with others, serving and loving others, putting others before myself. Begin to redeem your time. Be intentional about it. And God can show up in abundant and amazing ways and do things you will never imagine. 
but we have to create the space for it. And then when it comes to our relationships, right? With those around us, our, our wives, our husband, our children, our mothers, even our mother-in-laws even. Do we evaluate the time that we have with them in light of eternity? Are we saying the words now that we know we always should have been saying anyhow? So many times. And praise the Lord, I don't think this week was one of them when I did Thomas's funeral. But so many times I'll be at a funeral and hear people say with regret, I wish I would have said this. I wish I would have told him this. I wish she would have known I felt this way. Tell them now, folks. Don't wait. Are we doing the things we've always wanted to do before we cannot? Do we see our possessions, our finances, our emotions, everything that God has given us, our time, in light of eternity? It can be hard to do this every day. We might do it for moments, accidentally. We might catch glimpses of it. But the truth of the matter is, most days, we settle for less, don't we? Remember, 94% of people just trying to make it through another day, grinding it out. So when we think of our words, when we think of our lives, when we think of everything that God has given us, are we willing to create the margin that we might use it for His glory? Will we number our minutes, our seconds, our hours, and our days to make our lives count for the present and now and for all of eternity? Folks, redeem your time in partnership with God and see what He can do with it. Even if it means starting just with five minutes today. Look at Ephesians 5, 15 through 17 with me. You'll see it on the screen as well. There it reads, Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of time because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Paul is cautioning us here to, to, to be careful about how we live our lives. The word that's translated here as carefully carries the connotation of something that is done accurately and precisely or, or given close attention. Living well and using our time well does not happen by accident. To be wise is to understand the Lord's will for our lives, which corresponds with Old Testament wisdom as well, a tradition that stands behind these verses. The call to live wisely is not a call for some theoretical knowledge. It's a call for us to discern in our lives, for practical skills in making good decisions about how we use our time. The emphasis here is on our minds and living it out and paying careful attention to our lives and our faiths and keeping that on target. Because folks, spiritual maturity only comes through work. It doesn't happen by accident. And it takes time and long-term dedication for growth to happen. Imagine your life as a candle. Right? You ever been to a, a, a Christmas service at a church where they recycle the Christmas candles from year to year? We don't do that here. We use new ones. But I've been to those, and, and you reach into the grab box, and you're like, oh, I have a candle. Right? And it's always enough. It's going to make it through the service. I mean, it's got to burn for like six minutes. But you're always disappointed when you get that little candle, aren't you? A little nubbin of a candle. But imagine your life as a candle. A candle that gets lit when you were born. And at some point in the future, it will be blown out or it will burn out. But either way, at some point, the flame will be gone, right? Our lives are like that. Some of us burn faster than others. Some of us burn brighter than others. Some of us have bigger candles than others. But eventually, the result is always the same for each and every one of us. Time is the only commodity that we can't get more of in this life. And if, when we're not careful, 
You know, sometimes they say we burn the candle at both ends. Well, you know what happens then? It just burns out faster, doesn't it? It only speeds up. It only speeds up the speed at which our candles are consumed. And this passage says, don't be foolish. Understand what God's will for your life is. And make the best use of the time that He is giving you. Each and every day is a gift. Each and every day is an opportunity to make much of Jesus. Each and every day is a chance for us to tell someone we love them and that Jesus loves them too. Redeeming our time and using it wisely and understanding that it is limited will help guide our spiritual walk. And it will help guide our ability to share our faith and values with those around us. Our faith should be a sanctuary for us. A place where we draw strength and renewal from. Comfort and hope. But you've got to build a sanctuary first. It doesn't just happen overnight. And then, keep in mind, as we've been talking about throughout this series, each and every one of us has eyes on us. Someone in our lives is watching us. Could be our kids, our grandkids, our neighbors, our co-workers, our classmates. But people are watching how we live and represent Jesus Christ. And how we use our time is an important component of that. Are we living and are we willing to live in a way that marks us as different from the rest of the world? Redeeming our time will do that. Focusing on eternity. Focusing on others. Making much of Jesus along the way. Living intentionally so that when God does finally call us home, we will know that we have run the race well. And we will get to hear the Lord say, Well done, good and faithful servant. That's what we all want to hear. That's why time matters. Make your time matter this week. Let's pray.